Doody Doody. You're currently watching The Witcher 1, the Enhanced Edition post view, done after 10 years, because not long ago the game made 10 years, which means it's 10 years old, yeah, of course. This video is designed to help you decide if you want to play the game for yourself or not. It's not a review, because that would mean I would make that decision for you. But in this case, I will talk about the game in detail and let you decide for yourself. As always, I am not going to talk about the game's plot, and I will try to keep this video as uh, spoiler-free as possible. Ah, The Witcher. The game that features angry bouncers, nice. dull humor, Stop before you attract some she tigers. Huge elf foreheads. Using children as errands. Expensive hookers. And some cheap hookers as well. Some weird ass monkey and midgets. Drug manufacturing and drug dealing, obviously. I never turn down good fizz tech. Lovely, some lovely, lovely children. When the beast finds you, you'll die. Some awful dancing. Talking mirrors. Getting drunk in broad daylight. Getting drunk and fighting monsters. Colorful parties. Champion cows. Stealing from thieves. The biggest bank robbery in the history of the Witcher universe. Oh yeah. This is a robbery. I'll skewer anyone who moves. Bribing city officials. Some naked green women. Getting drunk again and fist fighting. Hit me, chicky. They fear gambling. If I lost. Care to play? A lot of gambling. And finally, having intercourse with some women right before the, their boyfriend's eyes. <laughs> no, but seriously. Now it does feature a nice uh, story with some awesome cutscenes as well. The Witcher in Polish Wiedźminia is an action role-playing game for the PC, developed by CD Projekt Red and published by Atari. The game utilizes BioWare's Aurora engine and was released in October 2007. The whole game is based on the book series of the same name by Polish writer Andrzej Sapkowski. And this is why I took my time with this post view, because I started reading the books for an insight of the story and getting to know in detail the in-depth world of the Witcher. And by the time I will do the post view of the next Witcher games, I will have finished all the books, I guarantee this. Although I'm not a fast reader. By the way, these novels are very interesting and they are worth your attention. And in case you are not the guy that, uh, you know, does a lot of reading, then just watch the Dishonored Wolves video who does a full summary of the Witcher books. I will leave a link to it in the description down below. All right, let's talk a little about the world of the Witcher without spoiling the experience for those of you who will get to mood for playing this game for yourselves. The story takes place in a medieval fantasy world and follows the story of Geralt of Rivia, a mutant, one of the few remaining witchers, a traveling monster slayer for a hire, gifted with unnatural powers because of the mutations they underwent in childhood. Taking place in a fictional medieval world, a dark fantasy if you will. And why I say this is because not everything is shiny and pinky and all rainbows, you know, happy ending and stuff. No, the world itself is raw brute, ugly, and full of strife, famine, corruption, racism, hate crimes, conspiracies, treacheries, and conflicts. Which subtly reflects to our world that nothing and no one is perfect. Even the knights and princesses of this world aren't by any means paragon or a moral perfection or a spiritual model to follow. 
Furthermore, some monsters are more honorable, honorable, yeah, than most humans. They have a, a more stable moral code. This world has a lot of Slavic folklore resemblances. This is due to the writer's Polish nationality. And this Slavic element in the game and books is what makes the Witcher universe so special and unique besides the fact that this is this is a medieval fantasy world. The characters. The characters are overall greatly developed with in-depth moralities, deep and complex personalities that makes the storytelling of the game outstanding and also helps with the fact that these awesome personalities keep us close to the story and helps us stick to it. This game also has a great antagonist portrayed by a man who is troubled and by this he became deluded and radical. But in his own harmful and destructive way, he still just wants to save the world. And this is good because it's not the cliche bad guy, you know, it's not the repetitive typical bad guy character, you know what I mean? And this just helps out the experience of the story. But the character voice acting is dull. And not because the voice acting was off, no. The voice actors did a good job, but most of the time the character's voice tone doesn't match to what they actually say. Getting somewhere, you come to the right place. See, eyes never get lost. And this is because the script was translated from Polish to English. And this proves that even if you have a decent voice actor, but a shitty character writing, then you get what you want NPCs. Which can be confusing most of the time and will confuse you. Because you will just not understand if the character is angry or sad, happy or just wants to kick your balls out, you know? It's, it's confusing most of the time. Alright, I don't blame them because this clearly happened for the reason that the script writer's native language is not English. But they say that the expressions and voice tone actually matches if played in Polish. And I believe them, because I don't know Polish, you know, and I can't test it. So let's say we believe you, CD Projekt Red. But in English, it's pretty damn awful. And confusing. Yeah. It took me about 53 hours to complete the game on 100% on hard difficulty. 100% means that I did all the main quests and even the secondary quests as well. What I really liked about these side quests that most of them had a connection with the main plot or just got a deeper glimpse of this world. Anyway, these side quests are amazing and merged into the world of The Witcher very nicely. Prompt. Another nice part of the game besides the story was the music. My god, that was some epic medieval folkloric music. It gives a sense of melancholy and happiness in the same time. They seem to find the balance between mystery and wonder. The music overall just enhances the experience the game offers. I think this is another part of the game that is very outstanding and is one of the best elements of the game. This game is a semi-sandbox RPG, which basically means that you have access to maps and areas depending on which chapter you are at. This is good because you get to know better and to connect with the environment. But there is a negative side to this. Because of this you are stuck on a certain map until you finish that chapter and because there is no fast travel included in the game. Which all leads back to one thing. Backtracking. Which basically means that you will be running a lot back and forth, back and forth and back and forth, again and again and again, from NPC to enemy and back to NPC and do this again and repetitive. And this will get boring and frustrating very fast. And it's very very time consuming. Conversations. You can interact with most of the NPCs by talking to them which is solved with conversation boxes at the bottom of the screen, where you can respond to the NPCs with the line you want to, from given options of course, Bioware style. Well now, these responses are not just texts that your character will spit out, these are also choices. Often the choices you are given are not easy, 
and will put your morality to test. The developers have said that their main goal with the game's storyline was to give choices to the player where there was no clear good or bad, and where the player would have to choose the lesser of two or more evils. So, the choice will never be simple, and this is also because the choices you make will always have consequences and have an impact on the world. Your decision will influence the world for better or worse. And this is awesome! This means that the player is invested in, you have an impact on the environment and characters around Geralt. Also, the consequences of these choices are almost never instant, only becoming apparent later as the story unfolds. And this is because the developers wanted to prevent players from going back and loading the game and trying again, if they made the wrong decision. The so-called save, choose, reload type of gameplay that is often used in similar computer role-playing games. This will constantly make you ask yourself, did I make the right decision? which only helps the story of the game and the suspense of it even more interesting. Oh yes, guys. Trust me, tension will be high when making a critical decision. It was the last time I was able to avoid taking sides. Let's talk about some mechanics. The crafting system consists of three main parts. Alchemy, which is basically potion brewing bomb crafting and oil mixing. These three can be done while Geralt is meditating. Alchemy is a major part of the gameplay. The player can create potions that increase health or endurance regeneration, allow Geralt to see in the dark or provide other beneficial effects. The recipes for these potions can be learned through scrolls or by experimentation. Once the player creates an unknown potion, he can choose to drink it but if the potion is a failure, it will poison or have other harmful effects on Geralt. Each time Geralt drinks potions, they increase the toxicity level of his body, so every potion has a positive effect and a harmful side effect, which is the toxicity level, and occasional drunkenness. This can be reduced by drinking a special potion or by meditating at an inn or a fireplace. In addition to potions, the players can create oils used to augment the damage done by weapons. These are temporary buffs to your weapons. You can also create bombs for use as a weapon in combat. Neither can be created until the talent points have been allocated into the corresponding skill. Well now, the alchemy is really essential to being an efficient monster slayer. Brewing potions needs two things. Alcohol for the base of the potions and some ingredients gathered from plants or from gutting slain monsters. Because of the com combat system you will never feel the need to use more than 3 potions that restore health, endurance and grants you vision in the darkness, even if you play it on hard difficulty. To mix oils you use the same ingredients, same as potions, except the alcohol. This is very useful if, if applied correctly against the given monsters and you will feel the need for it if playing on hard. As for the bomb crafting, it's just useless. Even if playing on hard mode, I never used the bomb. Well, I'm lying, I used the bomb once, but I looted it from somewhere, I never crafted bombs. But they seem very ineffective compared with the combat system. So you will never find yourself not even giving a shit about the bombs in this game. I personally consider it a waste of talents. Because, of course, you have to invest talent points in learning to craft bombs. So, overall what we have here is basically a great crafting system that they invested and took time to develop. But because of the combat system is so overpowered, you just feel that it's not that balanced. Combat takes up a bigger part of the battle as the preparation. You will never find the need to use oils, potions and bombs at the same time besides your spell signs and swords. Which is sad, and you can see that they really spent time bringing the system to life. You have to learn and read books, gather information from local elders or druids in order to get the receipts of potions, oils or bombs. 
After that, you need to spend time learning where to gather the ingredients, the same way throughout books or other sorts of, of information. After that, you have to gather all the resources from herbs or slain monsters, or just conveniently finding them in the closet. <laughs> yeah. And only after all of this you can brew, mix or craft the item you need for your upcoming battle. You will also need to acquire the knowledge on the given monster in order to know their strengths, weaknesses and tactics. Basically, information gathering is important in being an effective witcher. So yeah, this preparation phase with all the knowledge gathering and crafting before the combat is a big thing for witchers. This is how they will have the advantages over the monsters they will face. You will also find yourself searching for information about monsters and learning about their weaknesses and tactics, which is greatly appreciated that they could bring this part of the Witcher universe into our games. Still, as mentioned, it's not balanced and it's far from perfect, but the fans of the Witcher fantasy world will be grateful. <laughs> and it's, it's funny seeing that you will give food for village elders in order for them to tell bedtime stories about ghosts and uh, other monstrosities which helps you learn about them and widen your bestiary. Bestiary being the lexicon about monsters and all your knowledge about them. Tell me about them. When criminals and godless die, they arise as fladders or vampires. They burrow from their graves, suck blood from the living. Those bitten also become vampires and further spread the disease. To destroy one, you must drive a wooden stake through its heart and decapitate it. Great story. But if vampires multiplied as you describe, they'd quickly control the world. Smart ass, eh? Damn you. The in-game menu is very simplistic and therefore very easy to get used to. It has a tab for your quests, one for extra content about the characters as you meet, and uh, this is updated as the characters unfold. One tab for locations that also contains supplementary info about the locations, and the same goes for the glossary tab that contain, contains some information and history lessons and uh, everything, basically, additional information about everything, by this widening the experience for you in the game. This is very useful if you're not familiar with the Witcher universe. There is also a tutorial which is appreciated, and two more tabs. One for the formulas as you learned and uh, the ingredients you know too, that I know to you. These also get updated as you learn of other formulas, receipts, and ingredients, and also the before-mentioned bestiary for knowledge on the monsters. The interface of the game is also very simple and quite easy to get used to. I'm pretty satisfied with it. You see your swords and other weapons, and vitality, endurance, and toxicity bars. XP bar around the wolf's head medallion, which will indicate if there is magic or monsters near you. Bottom left highlights the spell signs that and the exact spell sign that is currently selected next to the other ones and right top of the screen the minimap and the in-game menu. The inventory of Geralt can be accessed through the in-game menu bar, also the big map as well as the character screens with your talent points and so on. So inventory is very small and just a mess. Everything mixes in your inventory and the items are marked with a small icons. So you will often find yourself misclicking and selecting other shit you didn't want to. On the other side, equipping weapons is quite easy and the alchemy sack where your ingredients are and can be filtered so that's better. Armor in the game is basically non-existent, there is only a tunic that Geralt can change in the game and there are only three ones at that. Weapons are more varied, but the game just doesn't feel like it encourages you to use anything else than the silver sword for monsters and the witcher's meteorite sword for non-monster enemies. Maybe you can change the meteorite sword with a more exotic one that has more damage later in the game, but it's no huge difference whatsoever. And the rest of the weapons that you can pick up along the story 
are just for selling them at the closest vendor and making some cheap money. Anyway, the looting system is also simple and easy except for one part. When you have to pick up a weapon, you can't compare them. You just have to pick it up, equip it, remember the statistics of it, and go back to the previous weapon, equip it, and compare them. Which gets frustrating after the first few hours of the game. Also, there's a few interesting environment mechanics like the time system. It's changing day and night cycle. This is due to the fact that certain NPCs and enemies can only be found at the given time doing their activity, sort of like a time-based activity. Say, ghouls can only be found at night time at the cemetery, so you can also choose when meditating to skip forward in time to the face of the day where you have business. And this is so awesome to see in a game, and it's one of the first few games to have this feature, featured mechanic. Uh, okay, one of the first because I can't say the first, uh, we have Far Cry for that. The other is the weather system. This can dynamically change from a light drizzle to dark, stormy downpour accompanied by thunder and lightning. And the NPCs react to the rain by hand hiding under the roofs, trying to get out of the rain. Animations. Well, you can't say that this game has the best animations there is, but neither the worst one. Although the character animations and gestures are terrible in the game, just as the tone of the characters doesn't match, the gestures doesn't match either. <laughs> Which makes the animations even more worse. And let's not even talk about tons, tons of re reused, sorry, overused character models. I mean, except for the main characters. But when you take into counting the rest of the NPCs found on the streets and the vendors, innkeepers, prostitutes and other characters, there are only a handful of models which are reused like a worn out bikini. I mean, really, not even a little effort into this? I think I can count how many NPC models they have in the game on one hand. And this can also be confusing and hilarious at some times. At one moment, you fight a burglar with your hands and fist fighting and whatever in the bar. Ramsmead. This is way over your head. You're making a big mistake. Spit it out. Who are your suppliers? Eat me. I'm out of here. And ten minutes later, an exactly same looking guy invites you in for the beer. What the f- Anyway, this can be all overlooked because CD Projekt Red did one- did something right with their visual effects. The graphics. Well, of course they are awful compared to today's modern graphics, but back then, 10 years ago, to make a game this good looking was outstanding job. So yeah, awesome job here and congrats to the team that worked on the visuals of the immersive environment and beautiful streets of Vizima. It's a hard job to bring this grim world of the Witcher from the books and put it to our PC screens. I could almost smell the piss and shit scents of the streets and the filth in the swamps. Yeah, yeah maybe that's because I read the books, but whatever. The talent system is basically points earned through leveling up, which are divided to three types, bronze talents, silver talents, and gold talents. These later when meditating can be disturbed into four main groups of talents. Main attributes, where there is strength, intelligence, dexterity, etc. Uh, spell signs, silver swords, sword, sorry, and steel sword. Now all these have a subsection where you can place your talent points based on its rarity. This system is easy and it's, it has a nice feel, fits right into the era. And finally the combat system. Basically the combat mechanics are a minigame which is not complex at all. What I mean by saying a minigame is that it just consists of timing your clicks. It's a time click based combat. Click at the right time and then you are forming combo strikes for more damage. And you do this in the game facing every single foe. Because it's very simple it's easy to get used to. but. 
as easy as you learn it, it's easier for it to frustrate you and bore you to death. And you will barely do rolling and dodging the attacks of the enemies because by hitting them you also have a slight pushback effect. Which means that the enemy is silenced for a millisecond and can't attack you. So you will constantly find yourself spawning at the click like your life depends on it. And besides that, the spells of the game are just overpowered. Still, you will have to find the right spells to match the enemy you are facing. But that doesn't change the fact that they are super effective. And because of this, rhythm-based combat system is so overpowered, overshadows other parts of the game. Like mentioned before, the weapons in the game have only a very small impact on the combat. Furthermore, the effectiveness of bombs, oils and even potions fades away as combating endless foes is very, very easy. Also, you have to choose between three fighting styles based on the enemy you are facing. There is strong and fast style to one of which the enemy will be immune or susceptible. And there is the group style which is only effective when used against three or more enemies. Crowd control effects, generally known as CCs, are also present in the game. And that is the only part of the game when the combat is a challenge and will try to keep your distance from the enemy when they have some kind of CC. Also, this is when the lesser used potions come in handy when you can counter that CC effect of the enemy, if you studied the monsters and prepared for the combat. Other content. In terms of other content that the game has to offer, we have the extra adventures which are short stories that extend the life of the game, but are best played after the main campaign. Some adventures are prequels to the main story, some are sequels, and some take place in indeterminate times. Believe it or not, there are currently 21 fan-made adventures that can be played after finishing the main campaign. For those of you who are hardcore fans of the Witcher saga and want to sp spend a little more time with this crippled but awesome game. Currently, if you get the 1.5 patch of the game, there are only 7 extra adventure stories integrated, of which 2 actually is developed by CD Projekt Red, the original creators, and the other 5 are fan-made. The rest of the fan-made stories has to be downloaded manually and added to the game. If you are willing to check out the stories these little adventures have to tell, then head over to my channel and watch my episodes of the extra adventures of the Witcher, Geralt of Rivia. I will also leave a link in the description down for it. In this game I have to agree with other critics and general opinion that this game is awesome for its age and the time it came out and tells an amazing story and does that beautifully. But other aspects of the game may fade away if you look at the repetitive combating system, character models and voice tonality. But overall, there are more pros than cons. So if you're willing to overlook negative aspects of the game, then you will have a blast playing this game, just as I did. Well, as a conclusion, you should only play this game if you are on RPG or a fantasy world lover, and of course if you already have been acquainted with the Witcher's world and or you are a fan of this series like I am, then this game is a must play. Also, the game won the award Game of the Year in 2007, so definitely worth checking out. So it was an amazing achievement for CD Projekt Red, especially because these Polish developers have came from nothing and had almost zero budget and even less experience making games. And they managed to make a worldwide known game. They literally had to learn how to build a game because it was their first game. So massive respect for this CD Projekt Red and congrats. Thanks for watching. This was my post view on The Witcher 1 Enhanced Edition. If I missed any important aspects of the game, please let me know in in the comment section down below. If this video helped you make a decision whether to play the game for yourself or just watch a walkthrough of it, then share it please, so it might help others as well. And if not, give it a like anyway, or I will burn you with my Igni spell. And never subscribe to my channel. Until next time.
Hoo-dee-doo-dee.